If your crazy Uncle Joe is going to insist that meat is healthy, he's got to be able to tell you what it is about meat that could possibly be good for you. We can break food down into five macronutrients. So if anyone is going to try to make the case for meat, they have to identify where meat's benefits lie. They have to explain where there is an advantage to eating meat in which macronutrient. Tell us what component of the carcass boosts your health. So let's analyze the macronutrients, carbohydrate, protein, fat, fiber, and water. We need a good complement of all five of these macronutrients to live. In which of these macronutrients is there an advantage to eating flesh? Let's start with water. And hydration is a real problem. As many people go through their lives in a state of relative dehydration, sometimes serious dehydration, is the water, is it the water in, your, in the carcass that's healthy? Well, where are you going to get more water in your food? From plant foods like celery, tomatoes, cucumbers, grapes, or watermelons on the one hand, or from sausages, corned beef, and fried chicken on the other, clearly from the plants. Now, there is water naturally occurring in muscle meat, but some of the water you actually absorb when you eat meat products is what they call, quote, retained water from post-evisceration processing. In other words, that's the water used in carcass washing. Personally, call me crazy, but I'd rather absorb water filtered by plants than water from carcass washing. We're often told to drink eight glasses of water per day. I hardly ever achieve that. It's difficult for most Americans to literally drink eight glasses of water every day. But you can get by with less glasses of water if you're eating grapes and watermelons and other fruits and vegetables. There's a lot more water in plants than in animal carcasses, and it's cleaner water. Advantage, plants. Let's move along to fiber. Every study on fiber seems to prove that it's even healthier than we thought from the last study. Fiber improves your health in more ways than you can count. It can help prevent diabetes, cancer, obesity, heart disease, and more. And how much fiber is there in animal products? Zero. Whether it's cheese or milk or eggs or fish or a hamburger patty, you're getting absolutely zero fiber unless you get lucky and you eat a fish that swallowed part of a fishing net. So water is far more abundant in plants. Fiber is only in plants. How about macronutrient number three, fat? Well, you do need some fat in your diet, but all you have to do is just look around the next time you're in a crowd to see that Americans are clearly eating too much of it. Fat is the most caloric thing you can consume. The average American is probably eating about four times as much fat as would be optimal. That's a lot of extra calories. And along with overconsumption of sugar and refined carbohydrates, the excess of fat in the American diet explains our obesity epidemic. When you're trying to determine the optimal diet, you can't ignore the elephant in the room, our obesity epidemic. Clearly, our population is a living, breathing demonstration of how not to eat. The U.S. has the lowest life expectancy of all the wealthy nations in the world, in spite of spending far, far more on health care than any other nation in the world. While we are, by some metrics, the wealthiest nation in the world, we rank 61st in life expectancy, 61st. That's pathetic. Americans have so much respect for our doctors and the medical community, and yet this is their report card. We're 61st in the world in life expectancy. We're the fattest, sickest population in human history, and also by far the most medicated population in human history. Hey, doctors, this is your report card. You're not doing very well. The problem can't be in our genes. We've got the genes of every population in the world coursing through our American veins. We're a beautiful mix of populations that often were very healthy in their countries of origin and then came to America and became fat and sick like other Americans. So what are Americans eating that could be making us so fat? 
Well, we're the largest consumers of beef in the world. We have 4% of the world's population and we consume 21% of the world's beef. Added fats and oils in the American diet increased by 30 pounds per person between 1970 and 2010, as the American waistline expanded dramatically. You, we know that when you eat more fat, you get fatter. You would think we might be able to figure that out from the word fat. You would think that Einstein might have figured that out before he attained age 75. Unfortunately, on some subjects, Einstein was no Einstein. So Americans are way too fat. And animal foods are, of course, extremely fatty, often with 50% or more of their calories coming from fat. And we know that the saturated fat and trans fats in meat and dairy are particularly dangerous. You would think that this is a no-brainer. The obvious lesson is eating animals is unhealthy because they're too fatty. But Americans can't give up on eating animals, certainly not, because, not just because the science tells them to do so. So along comes the paleo diet to try to convince you that eating the bulk of your calories from fat is a good thing. You may ask, how could it possibly be good for Americans to eat more fat if they're already eating tons of fat and they're extremely fat and sick? Well, here's the response they've come up with, and I swear I'm not making this up. They claim that eating a lot of fat is good for you because if you can manage to eat fat and almost nothing but fat all day long, it leads to the state of ketosis, which they admit gives you bad breath and constipation and dehydration and fatigue and brain fog and increases the risk for kidney stones and gout and osteoporosis and can make you pass out. And yet it's still highly desirable to achieve that wonderful state of ketosis in which fat rather than carbohydrate becomes your fuel because there are people who claim they've lost weight that way. Unfortunately, the weight those people lost may have been water weight, since a high-fat, high-protein diet is going to stress your kidneys as they work to expel all that unwelcome protein and acid load. In order to attain the glorious state of ketosis, you need to consume something like 80% of your calories as fat, 80%. Roast beef is not nearly sufficient. It's way too lean. In order to reach 80% of your calories as fat, you'll need to put a stick of butter on your roast beef and wash it down with some oil. People actually strive to attain this glorious, unnatural state of ketosis in spite of the bad breath and constipation and dehydration and brain fog and passing out because they believe it'll make them nice and trim. I'm sure that some people have lost weight on a keto diet somehow. But what is the logic of saying that you should risk all kinds of known health risks in order to allegedly lose weight when you could clearly lose weight on a healthy whole foods vegan diet? We have the testimony of untold thousands of people who lost significant amounts of weight, sometimes even 100 or 200 pounds, by eating a diet of whole plant foods. Just Google people who lost weight on a plant-based diet. You could find scores of them on YouTube. I know many such people. And they lost this weight by eating the kinds of foods, potatoes and other starchy vegetables, fruits and whole grains, that are not allowed on the lunatic keto diet because on the lunatic keto diet, you need to obtain 80% of your calories as fat. And how are you going to achieve that if you sin by eating one sweet potato or an apple or a big bowl of oatmeal? Even if it's true that you could lose weight by eating fat, why would you choose the unhealthy way of doing something that could be done much more easily in a healthy way? I could only say if you've convinced yourself that the paleo diet is a smart way to eat, and you're practicing the paleo, paleo diet, relax. It doesn't mean that you're intellectually challenged. It just means that on this particular subject, your thoughts and actions are much more foolish than you could possibly be. The Japanese people eat far less animal products, less fat, and more fruits and vegetables and rice than Americans. They eat out in restaurants far less often. And of course, restaurant meals tend to be high in fat, sugar, and salt. Japan leads the world in life expectancy at 84 years. 
the obesity rate in Japan is about 4%. It's 10 times higher in the US. So we can conclude the obvious. While you need fat in the diet, and the healthiest fats are the omega-3 fats, clearly Americans are eating too much fat and need to eat way less fat and way less saturated fat. And there's simply no way to construct a healthfully low-fat diet if you're going to base your diet around animal products. Okay, let's return to our list of macronutrients. Water, far more abundant in plant foods. Fiber, only in plant foods. Fat, clearly excessive and dangerous in animal foods, while most plant foods are low fat. And the plant foods that are rich in fat, nuts, seeds, avocado, have much healthier fat profiles than animal foods. So the macronutrient fat is a slam dunk. You're far better off with plants since animal fat is excessive and has the slight drawback that it can make you sick and diabetic and can kill you. Now to the fourth macronutrient, protein. Finally, we come to the supposed strong point of animal foods. This is their ace in the hole. This is what they base their case around. Even if they admit that it's too bad about the saturated fat threatening your heart, they say you need to eat meat for the protein. This is why when you go to a restaurant, your server asks, what's your choice of protein, beef, chicken, or fish? Protein was first discovered by a Dutch chemist named Gerardus Mulder in 1838, and I sometimes think the world would, would be better off if Mulder had minded his own business. All kinds of nutritional sins are committed in the name of protein. And yet the reality is that you get all the protein you need as long as you eat food. I haven't had any flesh foods in 50 years. I haven't had any animal foods in 35 years. And I'm fine. I've never been low in protein. And I've never been anemic. So if the thesis is that you need animal protein to live, I alone disprove it. Not only have I never been hospitalized for lack of protein, but in this entire nation of 340 million people, there's not a single person in a hospital today for a protein deficiency. Not one. This is an imaginary problem. It's a problem that doesn't exist as long as you eat a normal amount of calories. Obtaining sufficient protein on any reasonably normal diet is a non-issue. There are plenty of people who've been vegan from birth and they have no protein deficiency, never have, never will. But is it true that there are better proteins and worse proteins? As it turns out, plant protein is superior to animal protein. This is for two reasons. First, animal protein is higher in the amino acid methionine, which in excess has been linked to cancer. Second, animal protein is simply excessive. The body can't store protein. So when you consume excess protein, all you're doing is stressing your kidneys as you need to excrete it in the urine. And calcium is leached from the bones in the process to neutralize the acid load. So a protein excess could lead to osteoporosis. Therefore, the macronutrient protein is yet another good reason to eat plants instead of animals, since plant protein is more conducive to human health than animal protein, and not excessive like animal protein. So far, the score is plants four, animals zero. That leaves us with the final macronutrient, carbohydrate. Meat doesn't contain any carbohydrate, whereas most plant foods are higher in carbohydrate than in either fat or protein. So is carbohydrate healthy or unhealthy? It's a ridiculous question. An apple is 95% carbohydrate in terms of its caloric content. By weight, it's mostly water. Broccoli is 75% carbohydrate in terms of its calories. Again, by weight, it's mostly water. Is anyone gonna claim that apples and broccoli aren't healthy because they're too high in carbohydrate? That would be a patently insane argument. The same is true of virtually every fruit and vegetable. They're high in carbohydrate. You need carbohydrate to fuel your cells. It's the most efficient fuel we have. You can't live without carbohydrate. Our brains run on glucose and flesh foods provide no carbohydrate. Once again, advantage plants. Now, does that mean that all carbohydrate is healthy? Of course not. 
Whether a specific high carbohydrate food is healthy depends on the nature of the food and its carbohydrate profile. Is it a whole food or a refined processed food? Any food that is 100% carbohydrate is unhealthy. That would be sugar and any of its equivalents, like maple syrup, which is only a little less bad for you than white table sugar. Refined carbohydrates, the carbs and sugar and flour, are the problem. But as long as you're eating a whole food, a fruit, a vegetable, a mushroom, a legume, a whole grain, you don't have to concern yourself with how much carbohydrate is in it. And for that matter, you don't have to concern yourself with how much protein is in it. In general, just eat whole plant foods and you'll be fine. It's that easy. The single caveat to that rule, the fatty plant foods, nuts, seeds, avocados, olives, and coconut should be eaten in moderation. If you're overweight or if you have heart disease, these are the plant foods that you have to be a little bit careful about. So how could anyone make the case for flesh foods when every component of them is inferior to plant foods? What could possibly be good about eating meat if it's not the protein, not the fat, and it doesn't have fiber or carbohydrate or much water? What part of the carcass could possibly be good for you if it's none of the macronutrients? Ah, could it be the micronutrients? Well, there are essentially no phytochemicals or antioxidants in animal foods. There's no vitamin C. Most of the animals that people eat are natural herbivores. So where do they get their vitamins and minerals? From eating plants. Sometimes you hear of people miraculously overcoming cancer by flooding their bodies with carrot juice, beet juice, celery juice. That's because of the antioxidants and phytochemicals in plants. But you never hear of any miracle cures from eating sausages or people overcoming cancer by flooding their bodies with butter. Am I stating the obvious again? I apologize. But again, that's what happens when you're trying to refute an absurdly foolish argument. All the healthy components of foods, the macronutrients and the micronutrients favor plants. But what about the unhealthy components of foods, the toxins? Mm -hmm.